I'm Kevin, I'm from Juice.me. We launched about uh, two or three months ago. To say it in 30 seconds or so, Juice.me is a goal management platform. Juice stands for join us in creating excitement. And you use the site, you say, you go there, you say, this is what I want to do, this is why I want to do it. And then as a platform, we help you break down your goal into its core elements. Uh, you assign time scales to keep you on track and motivated. Uh, and then the third step is you uh, share your progress through photos, videos, documents, whatever's most relevant to your project. Uh, and that flips your mindset from focusing on the end goal, which is sometimes six, nine, 12 months away, to focusing on what you've already achieved, what you can really be proud of. Um, as a network, we then connect similar projects so that like-minded people can find each other uh, and you build a proper support community of people that genuinely care about seeing you succeed and can offer you um, knowledge about resources you might need or encouragement or mentorship. Um, whereas at the moment, a lot of people try and push what they're doing through Facebook. They're trying to promote their businesses or... Uh, promote their RunKeeper app and there's only two or three of your friends that really care about it and you get a few likes but nobody shares it and it doesn't really work. So what this does is it finds a community that genuinely care about seeing you succeed. Uh, so it's kind of like Kickstarter, finding people that care about what you're doing. We don't do the funding but we do do the encouragement. Um, one of the beautiful things about Juice is that because it's a site that's purely focused on achievement and progression is that you almost always get great feedback. Every time you put something up, you get two, three, four comments of people just saying, that's amazing, well done, really proud of you, how did you do it? So these are my projects, um, and it's completely generic. So it's not a, it's not a fitness um, or a health uh, website. It's not about educational or learning projects. It could be anything. So um, here's my book list. It's, it's just books that I want to read. Here's a, a project that I'm trying to learn 3D design to design a, a chess set. Uh, this is my first attempt at... Um, learning how to do 3D software. That's uh, an attempt at my fiance. It's not excellent, she wasn't very happy. I'm trying to learn how to code. Um, here's my vision board for this year. I'm trying to write short stories. So it could literally be anything. A lot of people do projects on behalf of charity. So we've got a charity link there and we uh, match the Just Giving model. So you can, you can do your projects directly on behalf of charity and we take uh, that donation through the site. The next stage, if you click continue, is where you break it down. So you say, these are the things I need to do. I need to read regularly. I'm gonna start that. March 24th, that's an ongoing step. Um, otherwise, you could change the date and say a specific time that you're going to finish. And then this is um, shown in a Gantt chart so that you can stay on track. But you're also accountable to, if it's a public project, you're also accountable to all of those people following you and they keep you updated today and they say, how are you getting on? And it really forces you to go and achieve what you've said you're going to do. The final step, you would upload things. So here are, it's my book project. So these are the titles that I'm looking to read. Um, so here is an animation. So I've got the overview here, and you can endorse this. And where we'll get to eventually is the more endorsements you've got, the more you'll be somebody that you can trust. So if you're looking for advice on fitness or starting a business or whatever, and someone's got 1,000 endorsements, someone's got 10, you're more likely to follow the guy that's got 1,000. So it's peer review endorsements to show who is an expert in what they're doing and who you should go to for advice. Um, so yeah, you can put on the video. Um, then the wall comes below that. And then the way the uploads are shown, we've got, uh, so this is when we did the animation, this is the storyboard, uh, and then the character development, the final characters. We've got the animation as it came together at different stages. And so what it's basically doing is it's a case study that's over a period of time. Uh, and this is where we feed into businesses. So say you're a business that is a personal trainer or a chiropractor, and you take people from one place to another place, you can go and get new customers by saying, look, this is, this is what we do, this is how long it takes. I think uh, for any designers in the room or any creatives in the room, uh, we all face that issue of people don't buy into the value of design. Um, they want to cut your costs, they want you to do it much quicker than you should be doing it. Whereas with this, you can say, listen, here's a live project uh, that I can show you. And you can see it's taken 12 weeks to do. And these are the stages I went through, the design development, the mood boards, the, the feedback. And you can show how important it is to take your time and do it properly. So are there any areas of feedback specifically you're looking for? Or... No, let's, let's open the floor and just... Wow. Um, I think you need to pivot because I don't think your offer is focused enough. You've mentioned a couple of things like tools for workflow for designers and charities and stuff, which I think yeah. potentially are sub-markets that you can explore. It's not that I don't think that people will use it or like it. I think that the challenge is getting people to share it enough and get enough engagement from people that follow them that get virality. So you've either got to scale really quickly yeah. and get virality and then monetize a little bit, or you've got to provide huge value and monetize a lot. And I don't think this project falls, I think it falls between stalls. I think it's going to be quite useful for people 
but not so much that they're going to pay directly for it. Yeah. And I think it's going to be quite interesting for people, but not enough that they're going to share it systematically. And I think you've really got to kind of say boat or bank. What would your advice be out of those two? I don't really think it matters too much. I just think you have to make a choice and then stick with it. Sure. Um, my, my initial gut feeling would be to see if there's a SaaS model in terms of the sub niches you talked about, like for charitable feedback. There, there isn't a really easy way for charities to feed back to their activists yeah. about what they're doing and where the money's going. That, that, that floats my boat. I think that's, that's interesting. Um, I agree with the guy in the back as well about um, doubling down on a community if we're trying to be too much for too many people. I think that's a challenge. Um, I think charities is potentially interesting, but other communities might be as well. If there's a community you can tap into yeah. that already exists, so yeah. you don't have that challenge of building the community, you've got a smaller set within which to build morality. That might sure. be interesting. So with charities, maintaining both the business and the consumer side of the platform, if you've got whatever charity you're running a marathon for, yeah. everybody running a marathon, motivating themselves together, might be interesting. Um, but my actual question was about your revenue model. I mean, I can see sure, yeah. it's down the side, but I didn't know. I haven't, I haven't discussed revenue yet, so thank you. Um, just a quick point on the the generality of it, and it is, it is a very generic platform. Um, what we found is that the people that really get into it uh, and put one project on tend to put two or three on. They're in very different areas of their life. So there's one guy who's hitting his sales targets as an estate agent, but he's also moving house and having a baby and learning Italian. Um, and the same tools work for everything. And it, it's very quickly, for some people, um, addictive of actually I'm really achieving this. And there's, there's four or five things in, in very different areas that I want to achieve. So. If I'm a bit of a waster and I haven't really got any projects, sure. but I, then lots of my friends are doing loads of stuff and I want to follow. Yeah. Do I have to sign on to your site before I do that? Or is it, can I just post things on Facebook because I'm, I can go, yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and encourage you because I, I like everyone else's achieving stuff even if I'm sitting at home doing nothing. Uh, how does that work? Yeah, it's, um, I, I would say there's three things that we need to do. There's four things. One is the design. I don't think it's smart enough. Um, so we need a UX guy to come on board and just neaten things up. Um, but then the three things we need to build an app because you can't do it on the go at the moment. You have to you have to sign on. That doesn't work. Uh, and one of the other things we don't have uh, access at the moment. So we need to once we get some investment, we need to put a uh, limited public access as a minimum. So do I have to have a login before I can actually? At the moment, you do, and it, it does cause us problems. You, you can share everything to Facebook. You can share everything to anywhere, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever you want with these buttons. But if I share that to my Facebook. Um, account and you click it, then you have to sign in before you can see it. And that, that has caused us problems. Great. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you.